Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Raj Dandekar and uh, this is the lecture number 13 of the machine learning uh, teach by doing project. We started this project around two weeks back and we have covered 12 lectures so far. So if you have not seen them, I highly encourage you to go through the previous lectures. Uh, the topic of today's uh, lecture is very interesting. It's called feature representation which is also a way of transforming your data set. Feature representation shows up everywhere in machine learning algorithms, right from classification problems to neural networks, regression problems, etc. But today we are going to cover some very basic fundamentals of feature representation. What does it really mean and why is it important? I'll be showing some very hands-on demonstrations in this particular lecture, which I myself did not understand the first time I had learned this concept two, three years back. So I had learned this concept from MIT's uh, 6.036 intro to ML course, uh, which is the course which you are following throughout this ML teach by doing. And uh, at that time, I did not really understand features. So uh, I'm making this lecture and I'm making this note so that uh, you will understand uh, feature representation and transforming data much better than I did. The problem I realized is that I understood the theory behind it, but I did not understand visually what it means. So today I am planning to give you a visual flavor of uh, what is meant by feature representation and transforming data. As always, the lecture notes for this entire lecture will be uploaded uh, in the YouTube video information. So let's get started. This will be a very fun and visual lecture, uh, probably something like which you have never seen before. Okay, so uh, the question which we will start with in this lecture is that how to classify data, how to classify data which does not seem to be linearly separable. Which does not seem to be linearly separable. So, so far we have only looked at data sets which are linearly separable and we have found the straight line which perfectly separates the positive class from the negative class. In this lecture, we are going to look at a bit more challenging data. So directly, let us take the example. So the first example which I want to take is that of uh, one dimensional data. So forget about two dimensions. Let me take a very simple example initially, uh, that of a one dimensional data set. So here is the example. In one dimension, we only have all the points scattered across one line. This is the center or the origin. Uh, and my points are scattered like this. So these are the points with a negative class. And these two are the points with a positive class. So let me also mark the x-coordinate of these points. So these are the x-coordinates of these points and their uh, label is given by what I have in orange. So point number, uh, let me actually label them as uh, point number A, point number B, point number C and point number D. Now if you look at these four points and if I ask you the question, what is that classifier which separates these points? And remember here, since it's one dimension, the classifier will just be one point, right? So you can say that if the points lie to the left side of the point, it will be my positive class. If they lie to the right side, it will be my negative. So let us try exploring different separators. So what about this point over here? Can this be a good classifier? Let's look at the left hand side. The left hand side has positive and negative and the right hand side has negative and positive. So this is clearly not a good 
separator because we need all positive points on one side and we need all negative points on one side. What about this? This is also not good separator because on this side there are positive points but on this side there are negative as well as positive points. Then what about this? Even this is not a good separator because on the left hand side there is a positive point that's fine but on the right hand side there is negative as well as positive point. So let us try to take an example to the far right. This is also not good because to the left hand side there are positive as well as negative points. Soon you will realize that this data is not linearly separable in one dimension. So this data which we have is not linearly separable in one dimension which means that there is no point which correctly separates the positive from the negative class and you can try out several different points even visually you will notice that there is not a single point which we can have and we can say that to the left all the things are positive to the right all the things are negative there is no point which exists like that so this data is not uh, linearly separable now how do you find a linear classifier in this case what to do if machine learning can't even solve this simple problem why are we even studying ml right why are all of us so excited about it so ml has to be able to find a linear classifier in this case so let us do just that so let us do some magic and this magic is when feature representation comes into this picture Uh, in the simplest terms, what feature representation means is that uh, transform this data. What if we transform the data and we put it in a different space? So what if we transform the data and we put it in a different space where it is linearly separable. This is the main idea of feature representation and I'll visually show you what this means. But for now, just think about this. In one dimension, this is not linearly separable, right? What if we can transform the data and put, if it, put it in a different space where it is linearly separable? Uh, let me explain this idea further. So let us look at our data points again. So this is my straight line which was right here. This is my origin. Uh, this is point A. This is point C, this is point B and this is point D. And uh, the true values or the labels as we discussed, this was negative, negative, positive and positive. And so this is not separable in one dimension, right? So feature representation says that let us transform it into a different space. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform this one dimensional data so I am going to transform this one dimensional data into a two dimensional data. Now what do I mean by that? So the feature space which I am going to construct mathematically if we denote it by phi of x where x is the x value of the points which we have. I am going to transform it into two dimensions by this formula x and x square. So let me take some sample values actually. So let's say if a was a, a was 1, c was 2, b was minus 1 and d was minus 2. So in my new space point a will transform to 1 comma 1 square which is 1 comma 1. Uh, 
point B will transform to uh, minus one comma one. Point C will transform to x comma x square. So which means it will transform to two comma four. And point D will transform to x comma x square, which is minus two comma four. So let me plot these four points in my transformed space now. So this is my transformed space where this is x1 and this is equal to x2. So point A is 1 comma 1. So it will lie somewhere here. One comma one. Point B is minus one comma one. So it will lie somewhere here. Point B is minus one comma one. Point C is two comma four. So it will lie somewhere here. Two comma four. And point D is minus two comma four. And now let us mark the classes of these points. Points A and B were negative. Remember, so these were negative classes. And point C and D were positive. Now let us check whether these points are linearly separable or not. Can you think of a straight line which exactly separates these points? It is very easy to even visualize the straight line. This is the straight line which separates the two. So on the positive side of the straight line, there are the positive points. And on the negative side of the straight line, there are the negative points. So now it is linearly separable. Isn't, isn't this a beautiful trick? So now these points are linearly separable. Isn't this a beautiful trick? What we did essentially was we went from this, we went from the one dimensional space, which is over this and there it was not linearly separable. And we transformed this entire data into a two dimensional space where it became linearly separable. If you think visually what we did was visually all the points were on a straight line initially. We just moved them upwards. So point A and B moved a bit upward. Point C and D moved a lot upward. And hence it was very easy to find a linear classifier in two dimensions which separates these two. So this is the first advantage of feature representation. If we transform the data, if we transform the data and if we put it in a different space, then data which was not linearly separable before suddenly becomes linearly separable and that was amazing uh, so this this actually also leads to one of the foundational uh, ml principle which is like an insight which or an intuition which all of you should have so the foundational ml principle is that transform data into higher dimensions to make things so transform data into higher dimensions to make things generally work better it sounds very simple when i put it like that but if you see every single thing at of ML such as even neural networks, even neural networks which actually look like a bunch of layers aggregated together, something like this, even this can be thought of like a feature transformation itself. It can be thought of as transforming data from its initial dimension, maybe it's in a one dimensional space or two dimensional space into a higher dimensional space through neural networks. In general, this is what is done in several ML uh, algorithms or several ML techniques. So now what we will be looking at is that after looking at the examples of features through one dimensional data, we will be looking at a second example, uh, which is we will be looking at data which does not look linearly separable in two dimensions. Two dimensional data. And this data is also called as XOR. 
so students who are familiar with electrical engineering will recall or even cs will recall why it is called as xor data so the data set which i am just about to show you is also called as the xr data xor data this is how the data points are present in this data so first let me plot the origin so this is the origin which i have then the first point whose true label is positive it's called it's a and its coordinates are 1 comma 1 the second point which true label is positive b its coordinates are minus 1 comma minus 1 the third point whose class is negative its coordinates are 1 comma minus 1 and the fourth point whose class is negative the coordinates are minus 1 comma 1 now i invite you to check from visual inspection whether this data is linearly separable or not can you think of a straight line which perfectly classifies the positive on one side and negative on another side you can think of possible straight lines maybe maybe consider this what about this it's not very good because on this side there is negative that's fine but on this side there is positive as well as negative so that's not very good what about this line so what about this line let us look to the positive side of this line we have positive as well as negative points on one side so that is bad not very good let us look at this line to this side of the line there are positive as well as negative points and to this side there are positive as well as negative points so again this line is bad in fact it turns out that this data this data set of just four points is not linearly separable in 2d it is not linearly separable in two dimensions so what do we do just like in the previous case we went from one dimensions to two dimensions to separate the data here we will use a feature transformation which takes the data points from 2d to 3d so this is again a beautiful example in which we will be using feature transformation to transform the points from two dimension to three dimension so i am going to give you the mathematical formula for what this looks like and uh, i want you to pause this video and think about why this works so let's say the points in two dimensions are this in three dimensions i am going to use this formula x1 comma x2 these will stay the same but the third coordinate i will construct with the product of x1 multiplied by x2 so this is the let's say this is the x and y coordinates in 2d i will transform it into 3d space with these x and y coordinates so my point a so my point a whose coordinates were 1 comma 1 will now become 1 comma 1 comma 1 my point b whose coordinates were minus 1 comma minus 1 will become minus 1 comma minus 1 comma 1 because the product of minus 1 and minus 1 is 1 so the third coordinate will be 1 my point c will be 1 comma which is 1 comma minus 1 its value will be 1 comma minus 1 comma minus 1 and my point d will be uh whose original coordinates are minus 1 comma 1 it will be minus 1 comma 1 comma minus 1 and remember that the true value the original label was a was positive b was positive c was negative and d was negative so i want you to think right now why does this this feature transformation work i am just about to show to you why it works visually but please pause this video here and think about the 3d space you know what these points look like in 2d right think about what these points would look like in 3d 3d with this transformation and with this these values then you will be able to understand why this is linearly separable in three dimensions what i am going to do is i am going to show you visually why these points are separable in three dimensions again i have gone to vs code right now and i have constructed a file which is called as xor.ipynb this is not a coding lecture so i am not going to explain the plotting code 
but I have just plotted different things here. It's just plotting. That's it. So the first plot which I have is with respect to the original plot. So these are my negative points. If you see in the data set here, so point C and D uh, in this VS code, they are marked by blue color. So blue color are the negative label points and the red color are the positive label points. So this is the plot in 2D and here these points are not linearly separable. You can try to construct any straight line here and you will see that it does not classify the points correctly. Now what I'll do is I will plot a three dimensional plot with this transformation. So I will use these coordinates of A, B, C and D and I will plot it in three dimensions. Just for your understanding, I'm using a, a Python library package called Plotly, which helps me uh, generate interactive plots for the purposes of this demonstration. It's a very simple plot. I'm just adding the third coordinate as X1 into X2. See here, and I'm just plotting it. That's it. So are you ready to see what the plot looks like in three dimensions? Please don't see this unless you have first formed a mental picture of what you think it looks like. Because when you see the plot, you will be amazed at what the, how it, how beautiful it looks. Okay. So let me show you the answer. So this is how the three dimensional plot actually looks like. Uh, see what we have done is that the blue points are the points whose true value is minus one. So if you look at the blue points, these are C and D, their value will be equal to minus one. So they will lie on the bottom side of this plane which is the linear separator now and the positive points, the Z, look at the Z coordinate, the Z coordinate of both A and B is plus one and the Z coordinate of both C and D is equal to minus one. So A and B will lie on positive Z. So C plus one means positive Z. So these are points A and point B and points uh, C and D will lie on the negative Z. So that's why their Z, Z value is minus one. And now can you see why these points are linearly separable? This is the linear separator, which separates these two points, this green plane, which I've shown here in 3D. And here you can see why it separates it perfectly. So the blue points lie below the green plane and the red points lie above the green plane. So this is the separator in three dimension. So in two dimension, these points were clearly not separable. What we did was we just took them above. So let imagine these four points in 2D. What we did was we took the positively labeled points and we put them at a positive Z. And we took the negatively labeled points and we put them below. That's why X1 into X2 we did. So the reason we did X1 into X2 was that for the red points, X1 uh, so sorry for the red points x1 and x2 will be positive so they will lie above the z plane and for the blue points look at for the blue points the x1 into x2 will be negative for the blue points so they will lie below the z plane that's why with this transformation we are able to find the perfect linear separator so the same thing you can uh, this exercise you can do mathematically by writing what these point coordinates are but you can even do it visually. You can look at these points and you can say that when I'm going to put it on the Z plane, A and B will go above because the product of X1 and X2 is positive, whereas C and D will go below because the product of their X and Y coordinates is negative. And then I have this perfect linear separator, this plane which classifies the positive and the negative points. Isn't this wonderful? With feature transformation, what we actually did was we have we are now being able to classify points or linearly separate points which were not which where it was not able to linearly separate it before uh, so we saw two types of feature transformations we saw 1d into 2d and we saw 2d into 3d such type of feature transformations can be done for any dimensional data if you have a five dimensional data which is not separable you can transform it to eight or even ten dimensions to make it uh, to make it uh, linearly separable in that dimension. So I hope you have understood the first part of this lecture, which is feature representation or feature transformation from one dimension to another dimension. The reason it's called feature representation is because uh, this, this is the new feature which we are constructing, right? 
let's say in our cats and dogs example this was the whisker length and this was the ear flappiness index but now i create a new feature uh, and that's why it's called as feature transformation in the third section or in the last section of this particular uh, uh, lecture we are going to look at a very interesting thing we are basically going to run the perceptron algorithm on the xor data set so in the last section we are going to run we are going to run the perceptron algorithm on the xor data set and just we are going to play around with it and uh, understand what's going on with feature representation great so what we are essentially going to do is we are going to take the same data set and we are going to apply the perceptron algorithm which we saw in the previous three lectures on this data set uh, since i don't want to make the lecture too long i won't go into the coding editor for this but i will take you through the mit's lecture and uh, uh, i will show you uh, the different experiments which have been performed in this lecture so uh, let's get started so the first demonstration which is done in this particular lecture is that these are the points see this is the xor data set i hope you are able to see these green ones are the positive points and the minus signs are these which are the negative label points and uh, there is no linear classifier which exists correct so in this demonstration you will first see that let's say we have no feature transformation and we run the perceptron algorithm we we will see whether the perceptron is able to find a linear classifier or not in theory there is no linear classifier but let's see how the perceptron does so i am going to run this now and you will see that uh, the perceptron algorithm will now slowly start running see it is trying to find a linear separator which classifies these points but it is miserably failing it is not able to make any updates at all and so the perceptron algorithm fails because this this data set itself is not linearly classifiable so uh, that is the first conclusion the perceptron does not work unless we do something to this data set now what is that something what we will do is that uh, in the second demonstration we are going to construct a five dimensional data space uh, and the way we will construct the five dimensional data space is that instead of looking at uh, basically just this product x1 x2 what is done in the mit's lecture is that they have looked at uh, they have looked at five features they have looked not just x they have taken x1 they have taken x2 and not just x1 into x2 but they have added two more values to it x1 square and x2 square so they have so in the demo we saw that we raised it to three dimensions right in the mit's lecture they have raised it to five dimensions in the next visual which i'll be showing and then they are running the perceptron to see whether it's working or not okay so this is the data set and now we have uh, the perceptron is being run on the five dimensional data set now since we cannot show five dimensions what is being shown here is the projection of this feed five dimensions into two dimensions and initially we see that uh, uh, just in two iterations actually now you'll see yeah just in two iterations the perceptron is being able to classify the negative points and the positive points correctly note that this gray area which you are seeing here is actually the projection of the five dimensional space into the two dimensional space don't worry if you cannot visualize this visualize this just know that if you transform the data set into five dimensions what was not classifiable before is now classifiable just in two iterations now what i am going to show is one more demonstration here so uh, as we end this lecture i want to show one last demonstration yeah so this is the demonstration let's look at this data set which is a bit more complex and it has four positive labels which are shown in the green plus signs and four negative labels which are shown in the minus signs now we want to uh, classify this data set 
again in two dimensions it is not linearly classifiable so we raise uh, the number of dimensions further so first we try to classify the data set in five dimensions so what we do is we raise it from or we feature transform it from two dimensions to five dimensions uh, which is also called as a polynomial basis of the order two i am deliberately not going here so x1 x2 x1 square x2 square it's also called polynomial basis of the order two for now you just need to remember that in the first iteration we are going to raise it to five dimensions and it turns out that the perceptron fails even in the five dimensions this is the classifier which it comes up with as the ideal classifier and it's miserable because this is very bad it's not classifying the data correctly at all right so then we do one more trick what we do is that we say that instead of five dimensions let me raise it to more dimensions so let me raise it to uh, nine dimensions so then we raise it to nine dimensions and then let's see what the result is so now we, we are going to raise it to nine dimensions and this is what the result is this thing here you can see that it is getting a bit better but still it's not perfect because on one side there are positive as well as negative points and on the other side also there are positive and negative points so even in a nine dimension space the perceptron has made mistakes okay then let's make it even more complex let us go to 14 dimensions next so the last iteration which i'm going to show you right now is 14 iterations is 14 dimension and this figure shows the classification in 14 dimensions and this is where we finally get it right so look at the gray area the gray area consists of all the negative points and the white area consists of all the positive points so we are able to finally find a separator for this data set when we transform the data from two dimensions into 14 dimensions uh, and this is when the perceptron works it turns out that in practice it actually makes 666 mistakes before getting to this correct answer uh, one more uh, so the first thing which i want to illustrate here is that in the in this demonstration we looked at a very simple data set and we saw that by just adding one more feature to it which is x1 into x2 we are able to linearly separate the data set but it turns out that if the data set itself is a bit more complex then we might need to go to three dimensions eight dimensions sometimes eight dimensions also fails so we need to go to 14 dimensions and that's when the perceptron is able to find a classifier in any case feature representation is a very very powerful technique in machine learning because it just takes data points from one space and moves it into other spaces which are of higher dimensions as humans we can only visualize two dimensions and three dimensions we cannot visualize 16 dimensions, 8 dimensions, etc. So when we when we show these these uh, separators, they are just the projections from that 16 dimension space or that 14 dimension space into two dimensions. The second concept which I want to illustrate is that of overfitting. So if you use too many dimensions, right? Uh, if you use or if you transform the data set into 14 or 16 dimensions, if you transform the data set into 14 uh, or 16 dimensions or even any higher dimensions like 5 dimensions, 8 dimensions, etc. It turns out that the separator which you get have very weird shapes like these. And that is a big problem because this is called as overfitting. Imagine if one of these data points which we had in the data set had a lot of noise and that is not a good data point and we should ideally discard that point. But now what has happened is that since this separator is trying to make the perfect classification for all points, it has led to a very complicated hypothesis. But what if it turns out that one data point, let's say this data point was not needed and it is, it is just a bunch of noise. So actually, what if, if this data was not there, what if our actual hypothesis was much simpler than this complicated hypothesis right here? So the disadvantage of feature representation and going to very high dimensions is that it leads to weird, funky, complicated shapes like these, which might have overfitted the data. This means that if I give you a new data point, this might not work as well because it has done, done just enough to make sure it separates the data set pretty well. So this is a big issue in case we have noise in the data. Overfitting does not work if we have noise in the data. 
if we have noise in the data set what works are very simple algorithms in lower dimensional data spaces okay so this is all which i wanted to cover today just to give a brief summary we looked at uh, uh, feature representation with two examples first we looked at transforming data from uh, one dimensions into two dimension and we saw how to make it linearly separable second we also saw uh, transforming data from two dimensions into three dimensions and how to make it linearly separable we saw this beautiful graph in python where we plotted it in 3d and showed how the points which are not linearly separable in 2d how they can be made linearly separable if you add one more feature which is x1 into x2 that's why it's called feature transformation so ultimately the definition of feature transformation is transform the data and put it in a new space where it is linearly separable we then also looked at the mit's lecture on perceptron and we saw how perceptron can be run on data sets if the data set is not linearly separable perceptron does not work uh, unless we transform the data or feature transform the data so if we transform the data into uh, a three dimensional or five dimensional data set it works so here you can see the perceptron works we also later took a very complicated example where we had four data points uh, this is that example four data points of positive and four data points in, in negative it turns out that in this example simple feature transformation like two dimensional transformation or three dimensional transformation does not work at all we need to have a 14 dimensional transformation which works and uh, finally the classifier which it leads to looks very funky and weird it looks like this and this leads to an overfitting issue so if the data set actually has noise then this is not the best classifier because it it has made sure to pass through every single data but if one data itself is not reliable then what if a simpler hypothesis does a good job in general if the data has noise simple hypothesis in low dimensional spaces do a much better job at generalizing or for future prediction so this is the overfitting problem we will come to the overfitting problem so many times in machine learning but this is the first time it comes in practice in our lectures so thank you everyone for uh, watching through this visual demonstration of feature representation uh, i hope you had a lot of fun i i encourage you to explore with this in python it's a very simple script i'll share this script also with you um uh, and uh, if you have not understood something please mention it in the comments and uh, i hope you are inspired to follow with me during this series don't lose motivation because every day i am making these notes every day i am making these videos so i am putting in the effort every single day so you can also put in the effort uh, so this will serve as an inspiration to you um the next lectures will be really very interesting we'll be going through several different concepts such as logistic regression uh support vector machines etc so stay tuned and i will see you in subsequent lectures thank you